Welcome back to mill. So like I promised you guys, I'm going to kick uh, this new roller guide set up in the nuts and test it out so I can, what are you looking at Danny? Sorry, Danny's on the hunt. Uh, compare it to the ceramic guide set up and uh, No rest for the weary. We're going to run a big white oak at it, what I believe is a white oak. Uh, if you remember, if you watched the video yesterday with the black oak, here, I'll just show you. So, very easy to confuse, but if you look at the bark on this log right here, get you close up. If you posted that up on a firewood side or a logging side or whatever with just a picture of that bark, they're going to say, oh, that's a white oak. No, that is not a white oak. It's black oak. Um, and if you posted up a picture of this log here on a firewood site and said, what is that? They'd probably say, that's not a white oak, that's a black oak. Well, I believe, we'll know in a few minutes, I believe this is a white oak. Um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, it kind of looks like, really right around the heart right here, when you look at this one little piece of wood right here, looks like a white oak. And it doesn't have that orange cambium layer. Or the yellow line around the inside that that one has, which is the telltale sign of a black oak. This one doesn't appear to have it. So I believe this is a white oak, even though it looks like a black oak. And that one's definitely a black oak, even though it looks like white oak. So uh, inside in the cambium layer and the leaves tell the picture, the bark is very, very rarely a good indicator. But we're going to find out. So... And I can, I can kind of tell by, by tapping on it, I think it's a white oak. So we're going to mill this one apart too. We're going to use, we're going to run the same blade that we started with yesterday, but I do want to show you something about bands because you can't just run your hand over the band and say, Ooh, this one feels sharp and that one doesn't. I'm going to show you a telltale sign of whether a band's starting to get whooped or not. Um, see if I can, if I can get this in the right light lights kind of actually let's come over here because the light is kind of to the south right now which is facing uh it's behind the camera so if you see my finger that way is south and that's kind of where the it's noon time and that's where the light is right now so if you look at this band right here now this band's probably got a thousand board feet on it and it's still cutting okay. But if I can get the light right, you should be able to see. Hopefully this doesn't backfire on me. I'm going to take you out of the camera, out of the holder here. Yeah, I think I'm going to take you out of the holder. I can't get it to do it. But what we're looking for is we're looking for glinting on the teeth. Uh, I'm going to take you out. This is a telltale sign that a band start, is starting to get whooped. You cannot just run your hand over this band. If you ran your hand over this band, you say, wow, it feels pretty sharp. Um, what we're looking for, if I get it right in the light, is if you look, let me get my, I can see it myself. If I get my finger here, it should should uh, focus in on my finger or my hand if I get my hand here. Okay, that tooth right there, if you look, you can see a white line across the edge of the top of the tooth. You see that there? Right above that little black spot? That's glinting on the edge of the tooth. Let's see if I can get it so that it's... Yeah, and you can see it on pretty much every tooth. And that's where the top of the tooth is starting to have a facet created on it where it's not a sharp point anymore. So you get it focused in on my fingers and then get it, get the tooth in the right orientation. Sorry, I'm looking through the viewfinder, so I'm trying to get you in the right orientation. So you can kind of see it there too. You can see the glinting on the top of the tooth. 
And uh, just looking at this in the light, as I look down, I hope it will show up, but I can see it pretty much on every tooth, kind of like that one that's facing us right there. Yeah, and I can see it on the side right here. If you get it in the light right, you can see the glinting on the top of the teeth. And that is a telltale sign that your band is getting dull. Um, it doesn't have a perfect apex point anymore. I'm going to pause you one second. I'll draw this. All right, we're back. I just had to go grab a lumber crayon. So here's your tooth. So your tooth comes down and kind of hooks around like that. And then comes down like that. And this comes down at 7 degrees. It's actually a that kind of looks like crap. This one's better. Let's look at that one. Did a bad job on that one. So if you see this tooth right here, um, when the top of this tooth gets rubbed off because it gets dull, that's when you see that glinting on the teeth. You can see it really, really clearly, at least I can in my eyes. I'll hold this still for a second so maybe you can see it. But the top of every tooth down that band is glinted. Now, I'll show you a brand new band. And on a brand new band, sometimes you can see glinting because there's a burr up there, but most of the time it's nice and clean, like what you see here. You should not be able to see any glinting on the edge of the teeth. And as I look down it, I can't see any glinting. This is a nice sharp apex where there's no rolled over edge, it's just, you know, a nice sharp point. And then this one is the one that we ran yesterday on that one log. We're gonna take a look at this one. Now it was a really dirty log, but here, I'll let you see down it. It was a really dirty log, it was a big ass cut, but I don't really see a lot of glinting. I do see some glinting. Like, uh, if I can get my finger in here, this one tooth right here, I don't know if I can get it to zoom in on it or not. If I can get it in the light right. I can, I don't know, I, I can't see that it's showing you right. I can see it with my naked eye. But as I look across, most of these teeth, I don't see any glinting. So this thing only made, this band only made, um, take a look here how many cuts this band made, but it wasn't a pretty dirty black oak log. So that band only made uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, I think seven cuts yesterday. The other two were underneath five, six, seven, yeah, eight, eight cuts. Um, this slab's on top just to keep the sun off that cool one. So that, this band only has eight cuts on it. The one that I can't find, can't really see any glinting on. It's not brand new, but it's not, it's not whooped over either. Can I see some glinting? I can probably find a few teeth where I can see some glinting. Yeah, I can see it right on this one right here. I get the sun right. I can see some glinting on the top of that tooth. Um... But overall, this is pretty sharp. I'm going to run this one just because I really don't know what's in that log. It has no staining. And that's, you know, if you, if you run, you know, you pick up an oak log and there's absolutely zero staining in it, there's probably no metal in it. So we're going to run this band. Uh, I do have the brand new band here. And this one here has got like a thousand board feet on it. And I am going to do a kiss sharpen on this one. Uh, it doesn't need a lot. It was running great prior to me taking it off does not at this point probably need to be set probably sharpen that with a chainsaw rock instead of my full profile rock and just kiss the edge and put that one back in circulation uh, one more thing that I wanted to touch on because I'm sure some of you guys have heard it sorry that you can't see my face I'm walking around the camera and there was a comment on my uh up and down adjuster squeaking well i'm going to tell you why and uh, i did adjust it here 
Well, I'm going to show you something with adjustment on this. If you own a Norwood mill, what you want, I'm going to back you up a little bit first so I can kind of get in there and show you. What you want on this adjustment is you want to be able to come down and stop and not have it creep so that it stops right where you put it, okay? And I keep mine pretty tight. I don't want it to creep down. Now, my wife likes, uh, she likes it to turn easier. So you can hear right now, it's pretty loose and it's still squeaking. And I'm going to grab my oil can. I'm going to oil it just so you can hear that it's a friction brake. And even if I oil it, it may still squeak. So you got a friction brake inside here. So sprays, I oil this thing every day. Um, it's dripping. It's dripping oil right now. There's oil on my hand. And oh, look at that. Still squeaks a little bit. So you guys stop fucking complaining about it. Okay? I'm sorry that it squeaks. It is perfectly adjusted, and I'll show you why. All right? The, the smart guys. Oh, mine doesn't. What you want to do is you can loosen this friction band right here. And you want to do that if you're concerned about it being hard to turn. You want to do that to right at the point where it doesn't slip down, which I think is stupid. Because the last fucking thing in the world I want is for this to slip. But I'll show you a good way to gauge it. When you loosen it and don't push down on it or the saw head's going to fall. When you loosen it, okay, and you come down, what you want to do is you want to wiggle this back and forth. All right, this is the backlash in the shaft. You want to wiggle this back and forth. If when you wiggle this back and forth, your saw head creeps down like mine is right now, I'm not turning it down. All I'm doing is wiggling the backlash. If your saw head creeps down, you're too friggin' loose. All right, so then we tighten it up a little bit. Just a little quarter turn, and then we do it again. We wiggle the backlash, and if it doesn't creep down like it's not, then you're good. You're at the minimum that you can adjust that thing so your saw head won't slip. You can go heavier, which I usually do, because I don't even want it to be close to the point where my saw head can slip. But now, when you stop, it stops. So you come up, you stop, it stops right there. You stop, it stops right there. You come down, it stops, it stops right there. But, you hear the squeak? Do you hear it? Still squeaks. It's oiled. It's at the minimum setting that you can run the saw at. Now, I can tell you, I'm not going to run at that setting. I'm going to go another quarter inch. Now, it's probably going to squeak more. But, I don't have to worry about it creeping. See that? I can... If anything, I don't like it. It's still creeping a little bit. I'm going to go a little tighter. All right, it's not creeping. That's where I'm going to leave it. And it's a little bit harder to turn here, but I don't have to worry about my saw head slipping down in the cut. So for those of you that, you know, want to become fucking geniuses, I'm sorry, but that's the way you adjust it. And it... Still makes noise. Okay, it's going to make noise and it's oiled. So just leave me alone on it. All right, sorry that it's squeaking. If you don't like squeaking and shit, then don't watch sawmill videos. And this isn't directed at anybody in particular. It's just the way that it is. I'm sorry. Um, what I'm going to do is I got this... Uh, what I believe is a white oak up on here. It's approximately 8, 10, approximately 11 feet long. Let's see how good a guesser I am. Let's see how good a guesser. I'm a good guesser. Let's see if it's 11 feet long. Oh, it's a, tw it's a 14 foot long. Oh, what are you, stupid? Oh, that mill should be able to cut that with no problem. I got 10 foot 
four from right there. Let me go right to the edge of this thing, see if I can make myself more right. I make myself more right. Nah, 10 plus six. Okay, so 10 plus six, uh, small end, which is all that really matters, is uh, inside the bark, like 19 and a, 19 and a quarter. 19 and a quarter by uh, 18 and a half. So similar in size, to, similar in size to the one we did yesterday. It's a little bigger on the butt end because of the flare. It's not huge, um, but this is stress this mill out size. So we just need to establish that. This is, especially down there in the beginning, and I like to have my big end down there on logs that start to get to the outside of the cut range because if I want to have a problem with clearance, I want it down there. I don't want to end up with it 15 sixteenths into the cut and end up hitting down here. I'd rather have the big end down there on a big log. And I don't care that this one just came up that way. So I don't really care. I didn't put it up there that way on purpose, but... There we are. I'm going to pause you guys. I'm going to put a band on. And I'm going to put a band on with the mill head down the other end. So nobody has to say, whoa, it's way easier if you move it up here. Yeah, no shit. I just don't feel like cranking it 25 times to get it up here and put it down and put it back up. I can put it on right there in two seconds and I don't really care. So I'm going to put it on down there. And the next time I bring you guys on, I probably would have dusted off a little of this dirt and shit. And we're going to be making a cut. And then we're going to cut this log with a marginal, not marginal band, a sharp band. This was a sharp band. But it needs to be to cut a log like this. Okay, you're not going into this log with the thousand board foot band. It would probably start screaming and stop cutting, you know, three inches into it. It needs to be reasonably sharp to cut a log like this. This mill is not made to slab logs like this. It's made to cut dimensional lumber, two by fours and shit. And this is at the outside of its range, weight, size, density for an 18 horsepower, everything. Run seven degree bands instead of four degree, which probably would be better on this. I saw some comment today. Somebody said, well, if you're, you should run seven degree unless your mill doesn't have enough horsepower and then you should go to 10 degree. Well, what the fuck kind of stupid is that? It's, that's like, that's argue, arguing or, or, or giving the opposite advice. No, if your mill can't run a seven degree, it certainly is going to run a 10 degree. It's harder. It digs in more. It's harder to pull a 10 degree through the wood than it is to pull a seven degree through the wood. But, hey. Safest thing on a big log like this, frozen log, big oak, and anything, if you're underpowered, is to run four degree bands. Go really slow. You'll get really good cuts. Um, seven degrees is a middle of the road, like a combination blade on a table saw. And 10 degrees would be a super, super aggressive, really dig in, rake. Seven degrees is a little less. Four degrees is way less, more of a scraping across the wood rake because I don't have enough horsepower to let my teeth dig in or it's going to bog my saw down rake. So we're going to go seven degrees. No doubt in my mind that it's going to cut right through it, but we're going to test it so we can see it. So when I say, man, I like them. I like them rollers better. I got a goddamn data to back up what I'm saying. I'm not just going to say, damn ceramics suck. Rollers are way better. Now, if I find out that rollers are way better, then God damn it, I'm going to say rollers are way better. So far, rollers are way better. If they're set up right. And if you don't know how to set them up, you fuck. You're going to run your band all over the place and you're going to be screwed. So the best thing you can do is watch, learn. You don't have to do what I do, but you can learn a little bit about the roller geometry. Put your own on. Get your down pressure right. Get your adjustments right. And then it's going to mill better than ceramics. It's my opinion so far. All right. So I'm going to pause you guys. Put a band on down there. And we're going to mill this log.
Now maybe this will introduce, uh, interest somebody who isn't going to argue with me. Um, I'm going to see if I can take some of the bark off it. I use a what I call a bark spud. It's some sort of edging thing for like chipping ice. It's got single bevel on one side. And I use the single bevel so that the bevel's like this right now against the log so it doesn't dig in. And I go under the bark. And sometimes on logs where it's been sitting around for a while, you can get the bark off. Sometimes you can't. And since I blew out under my mill, I don't want to get all this bark under the mill again, but you can. Now, sometimes it's stuck too tight and you're not going to get it off. Sometimes you can dig in if you're willing to put in a half hour of your time to do it. It's off here. It's coming off in big sheets now. This is going to help me not only roll the log, it's also going to keep my band clean so I don't wipe it out right away. Like I said, sometimes you can do it, sometimes you can't. Um, can you buy a machine to do it? Or you know, and I swear to God, if any of you say, Well, I have a one of those blade cutting debarkers, yeah, that's great. I don't. So if you don't, which is the majority of us, then you can get yourself one of these at a local hardware store. I would just suggest that you keep the bevel riding against the wood. If you go this way, it's going to dig in. It's going to be hard. It's like using a chisel. Um, paring out timber framing mortises in the field. All right. The people that make the flat side of the chisel point down when you're paring out a big mortise. Don't know what they're doing. You only do that with a big slick when you're finishing the mortise off or when you're finishing off the edge of a tenon. To clean out waste, you run bevel down with an angle. And if you do that, you can go along pretty quick because the chisel won't dig in. And also you run bevel down if you don't have a chisel that's long enough to reference across to be able to use the flat part of the chisel, which is a reference surface. I'm going to get off as much as I can here. This might interest somebody. And for those of you who say, oh, I just want to see milling and signed off, I think that's great. I think you should sign off. If it's too tough, I just don't, I just won't mess with it anymore. Might be able to, there's a pretty good chunk of mud on the top right here. So, and I'm probably not going to be milling that anyway, but I want to get some of it off so I can go check the other side. Let's see if I can just get enough peeled off so that I can grab a chunk of it from the other side. Most of the time, if I just find a little bit of place to get underneath it, you can peel some big, huge pieces off. Now, the other side, on the outfeed side, it's not going to be that bad. I'm going to go over there and just see if I can get some of it off the other side. And I don't know that I can. I don't know that I'm going to want to spend my mind, my time. Uh, bark's pretty tight, pretty stuck on this side, so I don't think I'm going to spend my time trying to get it off. No, it's pretty stuck. So, the hell with it. That's enough. Oh, here comes Mike Trotto. So, I'm going to have to put you guys on pause for a minute because somebody's here to pick up wood. So, um, see, there's Mike Trotto right there. Pulling in. He's coming to pick up all that cedar and stuff. So, I'll put you guys on pause and I'll be back with you in a few.
Mikey. All right, so I'm Mikey Timmer. Loading up over here. Say hi, Mike. This is actually this is Mike's line. Denoted by the MT. Yeah, look at that. Oh, believe me, they saw it all yesterday. Unless they didn't watch. There's video of milling the whole thing, so. Switch you guys up right here. We'll see how this band does in this big old white oak. Ready, Mike. Definitely, uh, see, it looks almost like scarlet oak. It's not white oak. Okay. I said it's not white oak. It looks like scarlet oak. Well, this was mine. This was mine. This is yours, yeah. Yeah, yeah I know it. I, but this is better than black oak. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much good? all we got. It's not a pin oak. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a black either because I don't see that orange cambium layer out here. Yeah. I think it's a scarlet just based on the color. I think it's scarlet. It's kind of really red. I and mean, look at scarlet, it has that real, real, real pink. It's like a white, white huh? It's like a white oak with red inside, and a red oak with white. No. I wish I could say yes, but no. no I, and now, sometimes you do mill a white oak and it has a little red tinge, and then it fades right out to that, well, kind of like the color on the end right there. Could that happen? It could. Uh, it looks white oak on the end. Like looking at the center here. Yeah. That looks white oak to me. That can be ugly. What's going on with that? That's a good lost spot. It's going to be like. Hopefully that. it doesn't go very far. Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't go very far. It kind of looks like white oak right here. But, well, you're getting uh, spoiled for this thing. I remember you freaking oh, holding that monster chainsaw. Oh, I ah, know. Ah. That's Believe your, me, this is a nice setup. I just um, did a whole change over, change my blade guide system to the floor. Yeah. And I've been testing them out, and it's just such a world of difference. It, it cuts so much better with those than it did with the old ceramic guys. Yeah. So that's pretty much what the videos are about now. It's just running, the, running these new roller guides. 
through the ringer here and see how they yeah, work. Totally, yeah, right. You wanted this like eight quarter, right? Um, I like I like what you did with him. Six quarter? Oh okay. yeah, yeah. I'm probably gonna take one more inch off this and then we'll go six quarter down, flip it over and you know what else. Perfect. That's a nice Annie, where are you? Annie. Huh? Oh, Annie. Okay. Scraper out. Bill. Yep. We're up to the solid log. Huh? We're up to the solid log. Right. Yeah, everything, everything this side of that pine beam is yours. Yeah. So I did see my first blade in the lumber. See my first little wave in the lumber. You guys look across this. It's kind of cool. It kind of almost looks like red oak. When I was saying yesterday, the red oak ends up with a lot more figure in it than the black oak. It's gotten still pretty smooth. The little wave, there's a little wave right here. Just full disclosure, between these two knots, a little bitty wave right here. Small. Um, 
nowhere, nowhere else in it that got other than that. Just a little bit of chatter here. I think they're starting to see the stand kind of uh, start to give up the ghost for the fire guard company yesterday with it. And if you wonder, you know, that lodge yesterday was probably, uh, I don't know, 350 board feet, 400 board feet or so total. But that doesn't matter because it was only nine cuts. It's big cuts, but it's only nine cuts. This one off. Probably take one more before I flip it. Oh, some staining in this one. I didn't see any staining on the ends, but I see some staining in the middle. Some black stain. Shit. Oh, yeah. I think I hit. Did I hit metal on that pass? Oh, this might be one of those famous metal dissolved in the tree situations here. Yeah, there was metal here. What? There was metal. I think it's gone. This is one of those. I've seen this happen before in oak. You see where this staining is right here? Yeah. I've seen this happen before in oak where I got to the staining and there was no metal. In it. And you think it was like it was uh like it dissolved, it was so long ago that it dissolved into the tree. Mm. It's a possibility because the holes are here. Yeah. yeah. So, so these nails definitely went through this, but they're gone. There's no metal here. Really? And you can see it didn't hit the band at all. The, the, the blade actually cut fine afterwards. Yeah. This is the piece, right? No, it's that one. It's this one. Let's take a look on the other side. I mean, is there a possibility that I get just a that the tips were sticking through. It was right here. Yeah. No, there's, no, there's nothing there. It's the stain. The stain from the metals there, but there's no metal. That's why. No, it's hope. Let's hope. Slide it well, back, back in the back in the day, you know, people used to put nails well, in the it. tree. Yep. Oh, all the time. You know yep. I like, Look at my bench right there. See by my glasses. You see right here by my glasses. Uh, yeah. See all that metal? That's stuff that's that all metal I hit in logs last week. Yeah. It's Mike. It's called, uh, I believe, spiking. Spiking. Oh yeah, when the the weather underground, the hippies started spiking trees. You should have. You would have been one of those hippies. Oh yeah, he you would have totally right been one of those hippies. <laughs> right, by, right off, right where Mike Duffany, you know, right behind um, the parking lot, the steamship. All those maples were all spiked. Oh yeah. That was back in the Weather Underground days. Yeah, they were like you know they call the Weather Channel. They have that segment on the Weather Channel now. It's the Weather Underground. Weather right? Underground. Oh, we didn't mean anything by it. Of course you did. <laughs> the damn people that taught you in college were all part of the Weather Underground. Yeah. I don't remember that. I, I, I'm so used to Weather Underground as the, the website where I get my weather information. I forgot about the Weather Underground. They yeah. bombed. They had... Uh, so... What was her name? Uh, one of the directors of that. Uh, Obama let her out and pardoned her, but they bombed a bunch of government buildings in Washington. They were eco-terrorists. Yeah. They were spiking trees out west, and they huh. bombed a bunch of buildings in Washington, and then sh a couple of them got put away for long sentences, mm -hmm. and Obama pardoned the woman that was the leader of the Weather Underground. I can't remember her name. Um, but yeah, he let her out while he was in office. Yeah. I don't think Weather Underground, I think Greenpeace. But oh, I well, think Eco Terrorist. Same thing, but we're, so I think kind of Weather Underground would kind of be above Greenpeace. Okay. It'd, it'd be similar to like uh, Ruth sent us and. Um, Jane's Revenge, and then having like Antifa down here or something like that. Yeah. It'd be very similar, I think. Greenpeace, 
Well, Greenpeace was more worldwide in Weather Underground. Well, Greenpeace was running around with their inflatables trying to yeah. get in the way of whaling ships. Yeah, which I'm like you that. know something? Hey, the, the, the greatest thing that I've ever, I know one thing, the greatest thing that I have ever seen on the planet Earth <coughs> was when I was a fisherman and having a whale come up next to the boat and stare at me. Come up, float next to the boat and stare at me. So they are up. the greatest creatures. I'm all for whale wars you know go out there stop them from whaling them blah 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 i'm all for it mm -hmm. oh, yeah, uh, no, but, they're part of us part of our ego yeah. Yeah. they're awesome creatures absolutely awesome mike i'm gonna make another pass through this let's see if we whack it okay i'm going down inch and a half and we'll see if we whack it hopefully not we have empty holes i don't know if you guys <laughs> Bonus! Bonus! There's nothing there. Good. Sure in the hell is nail holes there, but there's no metal in them. Must have been just the very, very end. That's why like, the nail was. Never maybe. see that. Never ever see that. I have yeah. seen it before. I have seen holes before that were empty. And it's very, very rare. I mean I bet I bet if we pull water on these holes, they go straight through. And the, and I think what happens is that the metal is going to go that outside? way. No, we can take it from right here. I think what happens is that the is that I think the metal just dissolves. Whatever they use for it'd be the acid in the, in the you know, yeah I mean, oak, like, oak yeah. has acid in it probably yeah acid. so you guys see what we're talking about it's kind of acidic. you see the metal streak right here. Let's see through the viewfinder. That's my finger. See the metal streak right here. You see there's two holes here, and you can see where they were on the slab underneath. It's definitely a metal stain. There's definitely holes there from whatever was there, and it's gone. So let's see if it shows up in this it's slab. Warm. It's real warm. Oh, yeah, it's warm. warm from the outside when I keep off it. Oh, I see a little more staining on this uh, one. Yeah, yeah, I am uh, definitely. Oh, so the staining's gone. So I'll give you guys a look at it. I'm moving on. I'll go down. It kind of looks right open to me. As they're drying here, they kind of look right open to me. They haven't faded out to white or color. Definitely looks right open to me. Maybe it's It's in the red oak family for sure. It's not a white oak. There is a little, maybe, stain right here, I'm not sure. Scrape. It looks like there's maybe a the hole there. But those are years and years and years of the way inside the tree. There's no stain on that. I don't think that's really staining. The stain is gone. The stain was right here. So that's good. We avoided nails. Um, let's see what I got for clearance right now. I'll take one more. I think we'll take one more and then we'll flip it over since we're here. 
get on this big ass log. Let's just take one more slab off it. And right now, I'm just starting to have to push on it at the beginning, although it cuts pretty wide. Still cutting really flat. I can't feel any waves in the log. Yeah, that's only that log. Still perfectly flat. Still cutting great. So let's take one more off. And then we'll flip it over and cut it from the other side. It becomes a challenge to hold on to when they're round. This is a max cut, pretty much right near the center. It's no joke, no joke wood right here for this mill. Slide it up there, then I'll pull this off and show it to you. There's a lot more figure than this cut. It's a beautiful piece right here. Oh my God. The rays in this are awesome. Hey, you guys see them? The medullary rays in this piece right here are unbelievable. Unbelievable. The bottom of this one right here and the top of this one right here. This is like uh this is a showpiece crab right here. Wow, look at that. Holy crap. This is a showpiece slab right here. The freaking medullary rays down here. Check this out. Look right here. Mm. Gotta get it from come over this side. Yeah, it almost looks like a pearl. Wow, look at the tiger stripes in that. That's awesome. All that tiger stripes. Yo, Mike, I'm looking at the medullary rays in this. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> this piece is going to be awesome. This is like a short piece. That's wicked. That's a good little elephant. Yeah. This is nice and short. Yeah, this is so good. All the way down. Too. Look at all the way down the side, all the way through there. That's beautiful. That yeah. is wicked. It's, here's that funky spot. Hopefully it doesn't get any worse. I'm gonna flip this log over and know it from the other side. And I'll keep it over there for you for when you come back. Okay, whenever you're ready. Thanks. Thank you. I just I just want to get them out of here to make room. <laughs> All right. Do we have a do you have a piece of shitty rope we can borrow for a minute? Yeah. I just want to tie this thing up. It's really that can't use the clothesline. Go in the back of my truck. There's a ratchet strap right there. Just take it, bring it back. I'm going to pause you guys while I flip it over. All right, so we get all this stuff out of here. Look, hopefully you can see it in the light. Those rays on the slab are unreal. 
I think this one might, in some light, crack right in half. Looks like it's going to crack right in half. Unreal. That sucks. This one looks like it's going to crack right in half. That really stinks. I think he's in a, he's building a treehouse out of it though, so he's going to cut it into lumber. He doesn't want to pay for me to throw it into lumber. So, we got her flipped over. I got her dog down. Um, I got some of the bark pulled off it. We're going to check the height here. <coughs> See if we can make our first cut. It's not going to be very many cuts. I'll go off my inch and a half scale. So this is like 12 inches high to the top. So we'll scale off the inch and a half scale. I'll probably make a cut somewhere down there. Wherever it falls on the inch and a half scale, six quarter scale. And, uh, I'm going to pause you guys and I'm going to take my audio off. I want you to be able to hear the saw in the cut. Um, also, I do have a little bit of room there. I think I'm going to grab my, so I'm going to pause you guys. I'm going to grab my chainsaw. I want to trim off this gear. I'm sure this is going to clear. That kind of looks like it's going to clear regardless, so I'll keep an eye on it, but they don't have to. 
I'm going to take my audio off so you can hear it in the cut. And I've only got a few more cuts to go. So let's do that. And uh, you'll be able to hear the rest of it here. I think I can just about cut it all the way out right where it is. It's only a few more cuts. So I'll take you off and take the audio off. Well, guys, that really sucks. I'm sorry. That's what happens when people come by. Um, I know you already know what I'm talking about. I left my ear thing over there. I don't know how much of that audio until I watch this thing back you could hear. But now I have the audio off so you can hear the saw head. So I don't know how many people are going to sign off. I don't really care. Um, I'll put something in the heading to let them know that the audio sucks from blah, blah, blah. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna mill the rest of this out, but I want you to be able to hear the saw head and hear how it's loading and hear how the band's running. I would say the band is starting, it's not like it's brand new, it's starting to get to the point where I have to push it, especially in the beginning at that full width cut. And, um, but down here, I can kind of go as fast as I want. It's still cutting really smooth and flat. And I'll show you some of the slabs in a minute, but we only got, I think, one, I don't know, either two cuts left to go or three, I'm not sure. but. Let's go, uh, so it's one, two, uh, let's see, inch and a half, three, four and a half, two and a half, three, that's two, four and a half, might be four, I think, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, shit, yeah, it's definitely... Probably four cuts left. So let's go ahead and cut some of it out. I you can know, hear it. I know that when I walk behind over here, you're not going to be able to hear me. So you, I want you to hear the song. Though.
I'll show you some more pictures of some of the slabs. Pause you guys for another minute. As you can hear the saw running through there, keeping it loaded nice and even. I've only got uh, one, two more cuts left to go. I'm gonna barely fit through. I might hack a little piece off the side over here with a hatchet just to make sure I can clear. It's really close. I was just rubbing, but I think it's gonna start getting smaller now. So I'm gonna pause you guys, get these slabs off, and uh, we'll make the last two cuts. All right, I think I got one more cut because I somehow I scaled off the top, but it's good because what we're gonna do is we're gonna really kind of put the pit slab into one slab, and that one's gonna end up a little bit thicker, I think. I'm not sure how that happened, but uh, just looking up. Yeah, my uh, inch and a half scale is not on scale. So I'm going to drop down, take an inch and a half slab off this. You know, make sure it's turned on. Let me show you the slab before I make it ugly. It's another one that's just loaded with rays. And you can see it's still cutting good. If anything, I'm just starting to see some chatter marks raise all down the side there. All down both sides is raise. You can see them right here. And they're on both sides. It's not a great view as it starts to get in the sun. You can see some over there radiating out that way here. As you start to get into kind of the quarter sawn wood, this is what you're going to get. And if you look at, even though this isn't, I'm not quarter sawing it, we're getting into that vertical grain. The pith is pretty much right in the middle. Um, I'm going to measure this. I might take this right in half. Kind of sucks that I don't know exactly <coughs> what I did there when I set my uh, six quarter scale, I'm not exactly sure what I did to mess that up. But uh, right now we're just less than four inches thick. The problem is if I cut it in, so I've got a perfect inch and a half slab above the pith. If I cut through the pith, both slabs are gonna have problems. So I think I'm just gonna drop down on scale, cut a slab off the top and let the bottom one with the pith in it be thicker. So that's what we'll do. And I chipped a little bit off the side right here. It's kind of funny too. It looks like white oak there, but it's not. And I chipped a little bit off the side to make sure I can clear it here. So I think it's just be able to make a pass. Yeah, we it's only up an inch. We look clear. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. water in it. I need water for this pass. All right, I got water in it. We'll go ahead and make this cut. That's going to do us. I think it might do us for today. Let's start working. Instead of working a little more on my taxes. Go ahead and fire it up.
here and take a look at the one underneath see what that looks like. Oh man, pretty awesome slab. It's got medullary layers all over it, which means the bottom of this one does too. Let's go over here. That's a fucking tripod. Get you over here for a minute when you see Danny. Get this one off. Supposedly got a customer coming out from soon. Fan's still cutting decent. We'll cut great in pine. Still, I'm just blown away by these guys. Blown away by the, how good they cut. Blown away. Uh, I'm actually I'm kind of scared to uh, kind of scared to take them off. To be honest with you. Until the end because of the audio problem. I'll give you a look here and I'll get it off and I'll get the bobcat and get all these stacked over there till he comes back. Look at the medullary rays in it. And I hope it shows up as good as I can see it by eye. It's awesome. It's absolutely beautiful. It's got tons of them. Both sides, just loaded with them. Absolutely loaded with them. It's all raised, both sides, like that. Like that, all down the other side. You kind of see it from this angle too. You can see them around that knot. You can see them branching out right there, kind of spiraling out spiraling out right there this is a beautiful piece it's gonna be awesome maybe he'll in his tree house that he's gonna build this will be his countertop that's what i would use it for so uh finish this up um guys what do you say? I mean, it's still cutting the laser smooth, big ass shit like this. Um, you know, kind of like being a little bit dirty. The one yesterday was definitely dirty. Um, it's cutting great. It's just cutting great. I'm afraid to take it off to put the new guides on. Water works awesome. Um, blade's really stable in these big woods. This is where the ceramics really suck. They would really be struggling. This thing would be screaming. I'd never be able to cut that whole log without having ceramics rubbing and this, that, and the other thing. Um, home run. Home run. And that band, so that band cut that whole black oak yesterday and this whole, this, I'm not sure. I think it's just a red oak, to be honest with you. I think it's just plain a red oak. It's not a white oak. I think it's just a red oak. Now, if you look at this slab right here, this slab looks kind of, being out in the sun, it looks kind of white oaky, but it's not. This is not a white oak. I think it's just plain, flat, a big red oak. It's not a scarlet. It's not red enough. And I don't think it's a black because it doesn't have the yellow in the cambium layer. So, just a red oak, but a really nice one. So... That's it, and I uh, appreciate the watch, and hopefully we'll learn together and uh, see how it goes when the other guides come, because I'm kind of scared now. This setup is so good right now, I'm kind of scared. And uh, I'm going to go work on taxes and watch the Par 3 tournament in the Masters.
maybe have a drink. I'll see you guys later. Hope you guys are having a great day. This is Pirate Solutions out.